Tears of the Kingdom is a very broken game. I know it, you know it, parents who still call every console the Nintendo even know it. It's pretty much common knowledge at this point. In just the first week of release, we'd already documented nearly 40 glitches, and that number has only gone up, climbing to over 200 in less than a year. One of the main reasons for this is the way that glitches tend to branch out in this game. More often than not, one new discovery will lead into two, three, or in some rarer cases, even dozens of additional glitches. Two of these branching glitches with arguably the largest family trees are Fuse Entanglement and Zuggling. These two alone are responsible for so many other discoveries that it would take me literal days to map out each glitch they lead to and all of the subsequent glitches that are possible because of it. These are, without a doubt, two of the most important glitches in this game, and today I'll be going over how they work in version 1.2.1. So what exactly are Fuse Entanglement and Zuggling? Fuse Entanglement, commonly referred to as FE, is the process of fusing an item to a piece of equipment while keeping both of those objects separate from each other. This state can be used to achieve many different glitches such as desync and equipment culling, just to name a few. Zuggling is really simple. It's basically the process of forcing the game to equip more than one of the same type of item, so like equipping two swords at once. This can be used to stack melee damage, transfer equipment across saves, or cause overload, which in and of itself will lead to even more glitches. Back in earlier versions, these glitches weren't too hard to understand and they were pretty easy to pull off. And while modern methods have managed to stay on the easier side in terms of execution, the same cannot be said about their complexity. These are not simple one-dimensional glitches anymore. And while most of the methods in this video are easy to perform, that doesn't mean that you can just jump straight in and be successful with them. With that in mind, there are two points I need to go over before we can get into everything. First and foremost, do not skip around to different glitches in this video. Every glitch I'll be talking about has some level of overlap with at least one other glitch in the video, and I've carefully structured this to cover all of these things in the order that you'll need to know them. So if you just jump around to different sections, you're guaranteed to miss vital information and just wind up confused. And second, going back to what I said earlier, and while most of the methods in this video are easy to perform, that doesn't mean that you can just jump straight in and be successful with them. The reason I say that is because there's some baseline information that you're going to need to know to be able to actually understand half of the things that I tell you in the video. So rather than stopping everything to re-explain these things anytime they come up, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what you need to know right now. To be specific, I'll be covering some important terminology, the locations that we'll be using, and explaining how culling works. Now, even if you're already familiar with culling from any of my other videos, this is not the same kind of culling, so do not skip over this thinking that you already know what I'm going to talk about. So let's start with the terminology I'll be using throughout the video. Base item and base weapon refer to the equipment that an item is being fused to. To avoid any possible confusion, this is specifically the equipment you have equipped when you press fuse. Target item refers to the item or equipment that the glitch is being performed on. So if you're fuse entangling a traveler's sword to a Hylian shield, the traveler's sword is the target item and the Hylian shield is the base item. Target equipment type refers to the same equipment type as your target item. Basically, if your target item is a Hylian shield, your target equipment type is shields. I assume you can figure it out from there. Fail drop refers to the process of opening a weapon chest with a full inventory and links back against a wall. When you try to drop an item in the chest menu, being against a wall will prevent that from happening, hence the name. This is mainly used to free up the D-pad lock that we get when we're doing certain glitches. There are a few places where I'm going to be telling you to prepare a fail drop for the target equipment type. When you hear this, it means that you need to fill up your inventory with whatever your target equipment type is. So for example, if your target equipment type is swords, you need to fill your inventory with swords. Then you need to collect an additional melee weapon, as well as a chest that also contains a melee weapon. And then you need to bring those items to whatever location you're going to be performing your glitch at. 
Next, I want to go over what culling is and how it works, since it'll be playing a part in every single glitch in this video. Get ready to hear the word culling way too many times. So without going into mind-numbing detail, culling is essentially a system that helps optimize game performance. It causes actors within a certain contained area to partially unload if you don't stay within a certain distance of them. The areas where culling takes place are referred to as cull zones. These zones are made up of multiple different layers and will usually be arranged something like this. When Link enters these outer margins, any actors that are inside the culling area will get culled. When Link enters the neutral zone, any actors inside the culling area that are already culled will get unculled. If you FE two actors together and leave only the base item in the culling area, the target item will also be culled and unculled with the base item, regardless of where it is in the zone. If Link ever goes outside the outer margins, any actors inside the culling area will be completely unloaded. Real quick, actors are essentially just objects that are placed into the game world. NPCs are actors, items are actors, furniture are actors, even the trees are actors. If it's not baked into the actual map files, it's most likely an actor and can be culled. There are a few exceptions to this, however, but I'll go over those a little bit later. When an actor gets culled, all of its non-essential assets, such as its visual model, are unloaded. The only things that are left behind are the important information, such as the item's ID, its position, or any variable states that may apply to it, such as a fusion or its durability. Culling is typically used on actors that are outside of Link's line of sight, but there are a few cull zones that are smaller and much more contained. These zones tend to have a much thinner neutral zone, enough so that we can reach and interact with items inside the culling area while we're in those outer margins. I'll be referring to these locations as small cull zones. Super technical name, I know. There are a few of these small call zones that you can use, but I'll be showing you those in just a moment, because right now I need to briefly touch on stick culling. Yes, I know. To put it simply, like like stick culling is a glitch that lets us cull Link himself as opposed to other actors. Now, I'm not going to give a full detail explanation of it because A, this video is going to be long enough already, and B, I've already made an entire video dedicated exclusively to like like stick culling. So if you don't already know how to do it, I strongly encourage you to pause this video and go watch that one first. I'll leave a link to it down in the description and also in one of those info cards in the top right right about now. The one thing I will go over is how to actually manage Link when he's culled, because we will need to do this later and I won't be giving specifics for it then. There are two important things with this that you need to know. First, watching a memory while Link is culled will cause him to uncull for a very brief amount of time. During this brief uncull, you will have full movement and control of Link before he gets reculled. How long you're uncalled is highly variable, but we can make that consistent if we include recall in the process. If you try to activate recall while Link is culled, you'll buffer the input, so after you watch the memory, once you close out of the menu, Link will automatically open up recall. When you exit recall, it will cause Link to cull again in exactly 18 frames. The second thing is how to actually stop the cull, which is incredibly simple. The only thing you need to do is either mount something such as a steering stick or a horse or pick up a large object like a rock or a fan, something Link holds above his head. Now that's all I need to go over as far as managing Link while he's culled, but there is one last thing that I do need to clarify. For the purposes of this video, whenever I tell you to perform stick culling, that step ends after the like spits you out and you've mounted the steering stick to unlock your ability wheel. Anytime I have you do stick culling in this video, there'll be another step we need to do before you leave, so ascending out of the cave to actually get culled will be listed as its own independent step. So please keep that in mind, otherwise there are a couple of things here that are not going to make sense to you. The last thing to go over is where we'll actually be doing all of this. For stick culling, there are two locations I recommend using, and those are Lookout Landing and Hateno Village. I'll put footage on the screen to show you where the like like is in both of those spots, as well as where to exit each of those caves for the actual cull.
For the rest of our culling needs, we'll be using small cull zones. There are two locations I recommend using, but I'll show you all three that you can use, along with how the actual cull zones are laid out in these locations. The first cull zone, and one of the ones that I do recommend using, is this shed here in Terrytown. It's located just to the left of the rail that takes you over to the construction site, and the cull zone will be laid out something like this. The second cull zone, and the other one that I do recommend using, is this slab here at the Akala Citadel Ruins. From the shrine, you literally just run straight and it'll be right there in the back. The cull zone for this one is laid out something like this. The last cull zone is also at the Akala Citadel, and is actually the staircase that's on the opposite side of the wall from the last one. I don't recommend using this spot, because the neutral zone on this side is much wider, and that makes it so your positioning needs to be much, much more precise to be able to actually reach your target item. And honestly, why deal with all that when there's a significantly easier spot literally 10 feet away? But if you want to, you can. If you do use a cull zone at the Akala Citadel, it comes with the additional benefit that there's both a melee weapon chest and two melee weapons that are on the ground in the immediate area, and you can use these for your fail drop, provided you haven't already taken them. And that's all of the key info that I needed to cover. I know it was a lot, but all of it is incredibly important to this video, and I appreciate all of you that actually sat through it, because you're the ones who won't be in the comments asking questions that I've already answered. Now, without any further ado, let's finally get into the glitches. So first up, we're going to start off easy with something that I've already covered before. Cull FE is a fuse entanglement method that involves timing a fuse to happen at the exact same time that Link himself gets culled. To actually perform Cull FE, we first need to cull Link. So head to your preferred like like and perform stick culling. Once that's done, equip your base item and then ascend out of the cave. Once you're culled, go ahead and drop your target item. Depending on what you drop, it may end up behind you, so you might have to reposition yourself a little bit to actually be able to highlight it with Fuse. But once your item's on the ground, while you're culled, activate Recall, then watch a memory, and when that's done, close out of the menu. You should see that Link will be in Recall when you close it. From here, switch to Fuse, and then you need to time the fusion to happen at the exact same time that Link gets recalled. If timed right, the target item will fall to the ground behind Link, and the base item will show that fusion in the menu. From here, you can repeat it if you want to FE more items, or if you're done, you can just uncall Link and you're finished. But that's call FE. So with the old entry out of the way, let's move on to the new stuff. The first of these methods I'll be going over is called Fuse Storage. Fuse Storage is exactly what it sounds like. We're storing a fusion so that way we can trigger it to happen at a later time. Now, this technically isn't a method for FE in and of itself, but it will be a necessary step for the next two methods that I go over. A very important thing to note is that not every item is compatible with fuse storage. In particular, there's a good handful of Zonai devices that don't call normally, and as such, will not work with this glitch or any other glitch that requires it. So, if you're trying to FE any of these items, you'll have to wait for the non-fuse storage method that I go over later in the video. Now, while all that probably sounds fairly complicated, it's actually incredibly simple. So to start, head to your preferred small cull zone. Place the target item at the edge of the culling area, and then activate Ultra Hand. Now you highlight the target item and walk into the outer margins. Once you're there, Turn around to face the target item and pull up Fuse. This should automatically highlight the target item and prevent it from getting culled. Alternatively, instead of using Ultra Hand, you can pull up Fuse and then quickly run into the outer margins and then turn around to face the target item before it culls. But in my experience, this is a lot less consistent, whereas the Ultra Hand method will work for you 100% of the time. Now, regardless of which of those you did, once you're in the outer margins with the target item highlighted in Fuse, there are two different methods you can use to actually perform Fuse storage. There's the memory method and the no memory method. For the memory method, pull up the menu and watch a memory. Once that's done, you need to close the menu and press Fuse as soon as you can. 
this won't be as soon as humanly possible. It will be as soon as the game can recognize the input. Now you can mash to help with this, but just know that the mashing isn't 100% consistent. For the memoryless method, once you're in the outer margins with your target item highlighted with fuse, press B and L at the same time to close fuse and immediately bring it back up. And then you need to press the button to fuse the target item as soon as fuse reopens. This one cannot be mashed and is a lot more reliant on the timing. Regardless of which of these methods you use for the second half, once you've pressed fuse on the target item, you're done fuse storage. You can check to see if you did it right by walking into the neutral zone. If done right, the target item should automatically fuse to the base item when you enter the neutral zone. Obviously, it isn't the most practical way to check, since regardless of if you got it or not, you'll have to redo the fuse storage, but for the sake of practicing, this is how you can easily tell. But now that you know how to do fuse storage, we can talk about the glitches that use it. Cold Fuse is very similar to FE, but works a bit differently. While FE interrupts the fusion process after the actual fuse has started, Cold Fuse interrupts the process after the connection has been formed, but before the actual fuse has started. This creates an invisible connection between the target and base items, very similar to how Link gets connected to the steering stick when we do stick culling. So the first thing that you need to do is perform fuse storage on your target item. Once that's done, there are three different methods you can use to achieve cold fuse. The fail drop method, the two memory method, and the map method. Again, keep in mind that all three of these methods start after you've already performed fuse storage on the target weapon. So for the fail drop method, without re-entering or moving too much further from the culling area, position links back to a wall. If you're doing this in Terrytown, I recommend using a hover stone for that. Now with your back to a wall, watch a memory. When that's done, without closing the menu, swap over to your inventory. Now drop your base item, then equip a new item of the same type, and drop that one as well. Once that's done, close out of the menu, and if you've done it right, the target item should drop to the ground at Link's feet, and it'll now be cold fused to your currently equipped base item. For the two memory method, pull up the menu, watch two memories. When they're done, without closing the menu, switch over to your inventory. Now drop your base item, then equip a new item of the same type, and then unequip this item. Now close out of the menu, and if you've done it right, your target item and base item will both drop to the ground at your feet, and they'll be cold fused to each other. For the map method, walk into the neutral zone, and after a very brief moment, hold L to open up the rune wheel and select the map room. Now swap to your inventory, drop the base item, equip a new item of the same type, and then unequip that item. Now close out of the menu, and if you've done it right, the target and base items will both drop to the ground at your feet and will now be cold fused to each other. And that covers cold fuse. Moving right along, wasting no time, let's talk about the other glitch that requires fuse storage. FSFE, or Fuse Storage Fuse Entanglement, is just that. Fuse entanglement using fuse storage. The process for FSFE is going to be almost one-to-one -one identical to code fuse. So like before, the first thing you need to do is perform fuse storage on your target item. Now, due to how similar these are, FSFE can use the exact same methods that cold fuse used. So again, keeping in mind that all of these methods start after fuse storage has already been performed on your target item. For the two memory method, pull up the menu, Watch two memories. When it's done, without closing the menu, switch over to your inventory. Now unequip your base item and equip a new item of the same type. Alternatively, you can either swap over to the new item without unequipping the base, or you can unequip the base and then re-equip that same base. Any of those three options will all work. When that's done, close out of the menu. If you've done it right, the target item will drop to the ground at Link's feet and it'll be fuse entangled to the equipped base item. For the map method, walk back into the neutral zone and after a very brief moment, hold L to pull up the rune menu and select the map rune. Now swap over to your inventory, unequip the base item and equip a new item of the same type. 
just like with the two memory method, you can also just swap over to the new item without unequipping the base, or you can unequip the base and then re-equip the same item again. Just like before, all three of those will work. But when that's done, close out of the menu, and if done right, the target item will drop to the ground at Link's feet, and it'll be fuse entangled to the equipped base item. And that's how you do FSFE. Now, there is one more FE method to cover, but before I can get to it, we need to take a quick detour into Zuggling. The next glitch is called Invizzuggle. In keeping with the theme of self-explanatory names, Invizzuggle is a method of zuggling invisible equipment. Super complicated, I know. So the first thing you need to do is prepare a fail drop for your target equipment type at one of the stick culling locations. Once you get there, you need to find the spot that you're going to be ascending out of the cave from, and you need to place all of your items along with the steering stick in this location. Make sure that you arrange your chest and your wall so that way they're in position to be used for the fail drop. If you're worried about going too far from your items and having them despawn, you can just stick dragon parts onto them. So once your items are all set, go ahead and perform stick culling. Once you're finished with stick culling, equip your target item and ascend out of the cave. Now, this particular like-like has a bit of a delay before it likes to trigger the cull, so while you're waiting, make sure that you position yourself so you're standing directly in front of your steering stick with the prompt to mount it. This will just save you time and headache from having to position yourself between memories if you get culled somewhere else. Once you cull, open up your inventory, drop the target item, and close the menu. Open your inventory back up, equip a new item of the same type, and then close the menu again. Now go ahead and uncall Link. At this point, the Invisuggle is technically done, but you'll notice that your D-pad menus are completely locked out. In order to fix that, we need to perform the fail drop. So go pick up the extra item that you brought with you and position yourself so that way you can open the chest with Link's back to the wall. Once you open it up, go ahead and drop your currently equipped weapon, and when the chest closes, you're likely gonna get recalled again. Just uncall Link, and at this point, you are 100% done the process. Unlike previous methods of zuggling, to actually end Invisuggle, you need to fully close out of the game and reopen it. Now, before we can move on to the final FE method, there's one more glitch I need to cover because it's going to be a necessary step in that method. STC or Stick Desync Clip is pretty simple but can do some very interesting things. The most common use for this is clipping through the ground, but it also has the secondary effect of creating an invisible connection between Link and the steering stick, which can be abused in other ways, like with our next entry. There are three different ways you can perform SDC, but the first two methods are practically identical, so I'm going to cover those ones together and first. So methods one and two are both the cold fuse and the fuse entanglement method. The only difference between these is step one being either cold fuse or fuse entangle a steering stick to a shield or melee weapon base. After that, regardless of which way you did it, stand on the steering stick, and then drop the base item, and mash A to mount the steering stick as soon as you close the menu. If done right, Link will mount it, and immediately clip through whatever surface is under him. And that's it for methods 1 and 2. Method 3 is where I was going to talk about SDC with Invisuggle Overload, but this method gave me so much trouble and ended up being so inconsistent through recording that I'm just skipping over it. It's not even that accessible of a method if I'm being completely honest, so you're really not missing out on much anyway. So instead, let's just move right on to the last FE method. Yi-Fe uses SDC and Mineru to create a state where Link can be called somewhat on demand. The first thing you need to do for this is set up for SDC with whatever method you prefer, but do not actually mount the stick yet. Once your SDC stick is ready, you need to make sure that your base item and the SDC stick are in a location where Mineru can be summoned. So namely, if you use the Terrytown call zone, you'll need to pick up the base item and carry the SDC stick out of town with Ultra Hand. Now, you need to grab the stick with Ultra Hand, lift it straight up, and just kind of hold it there for a moment, and then bring it back down. Now, with the base item equipped, you want to stand on the SDC stick, making sure you're as far forward as possible. 
Now recall the stick, and when it gets to the top, you want to perform SDC, but immediately mash B as soon as you clip through the stick. This is just so that we dismount before we clip through the actual ground underneath us. Once you land back on the ground, you can stop recall and let the stick drop. If you remember, back when I was talking about SDC, what we just did was create an invisible connection between Link and the steering stick. From here, you want to mount Monero and fuse that SDC stick to any location on her, and then jump off. At this point, any time Monero is forced to recall to Link's position, as soon as that orb touches him, he'll be culled for a brief moment. While in this state, you need to be very, very careful. If Link ever ends up in a position where Mineru is unable to spawn, you'll be completely softlocked. So again, please be very careful with this. So to use this for fuse entanglement, the first thing you need to do is find a position where Mineru will recall to Link. Then take out your item, pull up fuse, and then just time that fuse for the same time that Mineru's orb makes contact with Link. In my research, I have found only one consistent way to make this happen. If you take two long boards and fuse them at a 90 degree angle like this, you can place your target item on the outside corner and position Link to either of the sides parallel with one of the boards. In this position, if you manipulate your camera carefully, you can force Mineru to try and walk into these boards, and when she can't move, she'll recall to you. It might take some time playing around with to get the hang of it, but once you have it, you can essentially force her to recall fully on demand. It is also important to note that using EFE on larger target items can result in a soft lock because the target item, when it falls, can block the position where Mineru's trying to summon. So also be careful for that. But with all that, we are finally done with all of the FE methods. So moving on, the last few sections are going to focus on Zuggling. Wuggle, short for Weird Zuggle, is a method that abuses FE and equipment culling to achieve Zuggling. So as with many of the prior glitches in this video, the first thing you need to do is prepare a fail drop for your target item type at a small cult zone. Again, if you use the Akala Citadel for this, you already have all of the items you'll need for your fail drop on location. So once you're there with everything you need for your fail drop, the first actual step is to FE your target item. Then you want to place the base item inside the culling area and pick up the target item. Now walk into the outer margins and as you see the base item starting to cull, you need to bring up the inventory. Now drop your target item and without closing the menu, equip another item of the same type. Now close out of the menu and re-enter the neutral zone. If done right, once you re-enter the neutral zone, the target item will reappear in your hand on top of the newly equipped item. And then with no other equipment in that slot, pick up your base item. From this point, go ahead and perform your fail drop. Go ahead and perform your fail drop. From this point, you're all done, but you do need to keep in mind that your zuggled item and base item are still connected, so you need to keep the base item to keep the zuggle. If you lose or unequip that base item, the zuggled item will be despawned. Now, I'm sure that sounds plenty inconvenient, but luckily, our last glitch can fix that. Zoggle, don't ask me where that name came from, is a glitch that allows you to wuggle without the reliance on a connected base item, giving you a much more traditional zuggle. It is important to note that this application of Zoggle can only be used for melee weapons and bows. Shields require a much different process that I was not able to fit in this video. Depending on what you want to Zoggle, the first half of the process will be a bit different. So method one is going to be for melee weapons. As is tradition at this point, the first thing you need to do is prepare your fail drop for your target item type at a small call zone. Now go ahead and cold fuse a shield to your target weapon. This shield will be referred to as shield A. Next you need to drop your target weapon basically anywhere that is outside of the culling area and then FE shield A to another shield. This new shield will be shield B. When that's done, drop shield B outside of the culling area and pick up shield A. 
Now you need to fuse your target weapon to shield A. Because these two items were cold fused, as soon as you try and fuse them together normally, it will automatically fuse and tangle the target weapon to shield A. Once that's happened, pick up your target weapon. From here, proceed to the final steps, which I will talk about after method two. Method two is gonna be for bows. So like before, the first thing you need to do is prepare a fail drop for your target item type at a small call zone. For the next step, we need to set up another glitch called portable culling. It probably sounds complicated, but it's really simple. So to do that, you need to set up SDC by specifically cold fusing a steering stick to a melee weapon base. Very important, it needs to be cold fused and it needs to be a melee weapon base. Once you've done the cold fuse, perform SDC, specifically by lifting it up off the ground and performing SDC in the air so you do not clip through the ground. After you've done SDC, you need to fully fuse that SDC stick to the base item that you cold fused it to. So once you've done that, you're ready to actually start method two. So first thing, go ahead and drop a shield. This will be referred to as shield A. Now you need to equip another shield. This shield will be shield B and you need to FE shield A to shield B. Now drop shield B outside of the culling area, pick up shield A and perform fuse storage on the target weapon with shield A as the base. Once you've set up fuse storage, there are two things that you can do. You can do the two memory method or do the map method that we talked about before, where you walk into the neutral zone, and then after a brief moment, hold L and bring up the map rune. Whichever of those you do, once you are in your minus menu, press plus to swap over to the inventory. Now you need to drop your equipped portable culling weapon, and then without closing the menu, you need to equip a different weapon of the same type. This will cause Link to cull very briefly and cause the target weapon to entangle with shield A. After that's happened, go ahead and pick up your target weapon. From here, proceed on to the final steps. So now, regardless of which of the prior methods you used, be it for melee or bows, these are the final steps. So for those final steps, place shield B inside the culling area, wuggle the target weapon, and perform a fail drop to complete the wuggle. Once you've done all of that, drop shield A, equip a new shield, and then fuse a rocket to this shield. Now unequip this rocket shield and pick shield A back up. Now with shield B still inside the culling area because you shouldn't have touched it, we're gonna use that to wuggle shield A. During that process, when you swap to the new shield, make sure that shield you swap to is the rocket shield. Once you have shield A wuggled on top of the rocket shield, go ahead and use that rocket shield. If you want, you can press B as soon as it starts and that'll cancel out the animation, but still cause the rocket to break. What this did was break the connection between our target weapon and our base weapon. So now if you were to reload your save, you'll see that your zoggled weapon will still be in your hand, unlike with Wuggle. From here, the zoggle will function exactly like a traditional zoggle. And that's it. That's everything you need to know about FE and Zuggling in 1.2.1. 
This video was, by no exaggeration, unbelievably hard to put together and would not have been possible without the help of so many different members of the glitch hunting community. In particular, I want to give a massive thank you to Black Mars, Armindo Emia, and Lidos for taking the time to constantly answer my incessant questions and helping make sure that I understood everything that I was putting in this video. But they were not the only ones. I also want to give a thank you to Auk, Nightmare, Winterboy77, Zass, Robuxy2, Yi, Luxstyle, Arachnid, and Sideways for helping me with a ton of additional research for this video, as well as this month's channel members, EJ Mixmaster and Timber. But that's it for this one. Hopefully this helps you out, and I'll see you next time.